It's a candlelight procession. Why did I just say about progress? Especially the solidarity forever. We continue to resist that uh, because uh, those salaries are products of law, products of engagement, and product of uh, collective bargaining process. So it is not expected that unilaterally uh, somebody will just wake up and say, I've deducted your salary because of this challenge. Uh, so clearly speaking, this is not the way to go. It will put more people into poverty. Uh, will have uh, a pool of working poor. People are working yet they are poor and therefore it will compound our socio-economic situation and uh, also compound the security and social challenges. To such challenges in ways and manner that is allowed by our law and also using our time-tested process of engagement. Yeah, aside uh, COVID-19, do you have statistics of uh, Nigerian workers who have lost their lives in the course of and the line of duty? Uh, for now, I think uh, we don't have such strategy, but I'm sure that uh, individual unions, uh, affiliates, should be able to have that because workers belong to the affiliates, belong to the unions, and the unions affiliate to NLC. But we will try to update uh, these records uh, so that at each memorial we'll be able to point out to those workers that have paid the spring price. Uh, because we have those also that have been injured. It's not only about those that have paid the spring price and died in the line of duty, but also that those that have suffered permanent injuries. And there are so many in our armed forces, in our police, in different sectors, uh, in the airline, uh, aviation industry, uh, in the healthcare. You have so many of them. And therefore, we'll try to see how to document uh, uh, some of those uh, incidences and also try to use them uh, to try to do the memorial. So what's your position on the extra one? Everything we have said is gradual opening up. Uh, that lockdown should be perpetual and uh, you cannot also abruptly just uh, open up. So clearly speaking, I think it has met the exception of labor. It has met some of the issues we have raised that uh, gradually we must find a balance between continuous lockdown and also uh, continue to look at the means of livelihood of uh, many Nigerians. So clearly speaking, I think it's part of the text we have shared uh, very wide about what needed to be done and uh, it's in tandem with uh, what is happening globally. Some workers in the aviation sector have been told that they should not expect salary as a result of this lockdown. What more do you have for them? Yeah, those are the challenges we'll confront headlong. And uh, clearly speaking, as I said, uh, it is not something that uh, is cheering. It's something that is uh, obviously challenging. And uh, if means of livelihood of any family, of any worker is actually reduced or uh, is uh, cut off, certainly you know that uh, it uh, brings uh, more challenge and, uh, to that, the family, but not even the family, even the country at large. So clearly speaking, labor will continue to make sure that such things don't happen. Uh, where they happen, we should be able to put in place uh, mitigation measures. Frontliners, and I want to also adopt all negatives, as I've been so said. I will say that let me concentrate on the part that today is a day we are trying to reflect on workers that have died, lost limbs, or suffered some form of hazard globally. Let me seize this opportunity to say that one thing if government, if Nigeria must win this battle, is for the government, both at federal and state levels, to desist from discriminatory treatment to the frontline health workers. That is something that must be done. In this battle, none is better exposed than the other. There has been no scientific proof that the COVID virus has discussed with anyone to say that when I see a particular health worker, I will harm him more because he's highly placed. And that when I see another health worker, I will harm him less. No scientific proof whatsoever anywhere. Therefore, treatment should be given appropriately to all health workers without discrimination. Another I would say, I want to plead with the government here today that to put the frontline health workers or all health workers in optimum 
state of mind and morale. All actions taken that would discourage or will dampen the resolve of the health workers should be stopped. For instance, I want to thank government in compassionately or in their compassion trying to say that they will pay ASU workers who were on strike. The government should be more compassionate again to pay all health workers that are owed salary in one way or the other. Be it in FMC Uweri, where some workers are owed four to seven months, in Jute, in, in Lagos, and of course, April, May, for all health workers, federal health workers, other than medical doctors that are owed, nurses, scientists, and other health professionals like the technicians and others. Even the non-skilled are owed these monies. I want to use this opportunity to plead with government that in order that you don't allow more people to die of hunger because of this withheld salaries, to make us to mourn more, please save our souls. With that, I would say thank you, NLC. Thank you, civil society. Thank you all that have made this day possible. Not forgetting also the press, because without you,